So what is your maturation philosophy? What sort of style are you trying to achieve? Uh, the Lake Single Malt Whiskey is a sherry lead flavor packed and wood forward house style. That's our house style and that's what we're trying to create. So we are a sherry lead whiskey distillery. Uh, predominantly we use first fill sherry casks. Uh, but we also use a good proportion of bourbon, port and red wine cask in our portfolio. Uh, when we talk about sherry cask, it's not just one sherry, but we use three different sherries, Oloroso, PX and Fino Sherry. Oloroso forms the backbone of all our single malts, uh, you know, followed by PX and Fino. Uh, we, I always like to use the combination of red wine cask, bourbon cask to add contrast and deepen certain flavors and characteristic I get. Uh, there is a lot of experimentation as well, uh, but I like to keep things simple and focus on one thing and go deeper into it. So that's why we try to have uh, experiments going on on various types of sherry. We have Amontillado, Palo Cortado, Manzanilla, we have Fino, we have different types of Oloroso, different types of PX cask. That gives me a variety of flavors and aromas that I can choose from to create the whiskies I'm working on. So it's obviously very important to your whiskey and your brand, but what is it that draws you to sherry casks? Yeah, uh, you know, once I read uh, somewhere that write the books you want to read uh, and, you know, following the same philosophy, you know, I want to create the whiskies that I love drinking. Uh, and for me, I have always loved uh, sherry cask whiskies, uh, whether it's Glen Ronach or Classic Macallans. Uh, you know, something about the sherry, the dry fruit character and the combination of ginger, dry fruit, sultanas and a bit of vanilla. Uh, you know, th that for me is a perfect balance and flavor combination. Also sherry cask, a lot of people consider sherry to be very, very dominant, like a sherry bomb, very intense character. But there's another style of sherry, which is much more elegant, restrained, uh, a bit of vanilla and easy drinking. And that's the style that I'm trying to create at Lakes. What cask sizes do you use then? Yeah, for us uh, at Lakes, the smallest cask size is a 200 liter American standard barrel, uh, but we use predominantly hogsets and sherry pots. So because your whiskey is a no age statement, how do you achieve that complexity in the whiskey? Yeah, very, very good question. Uh, I don't think there is a science or a recipe or a formula to create a good whiskey. Uh, the one thing that I look when I am assessing all the cask is the peak of maturation. Uh, every cask, uh, regardless if it's the same size, uh, if it's the same uh, type of cask, whether it's an Oloroso cask hogshead, they will all mature slightly differently. And they will ha all have a peak of maturation where the cask will be at its peak, when the, all the flavors are quite balanced, harmonized, there's good oxidation. And so when I am assessing all the cast for creating Whiskey Makers Reserve or any of our single malt whiskies, I'll go through and pick out handpicked casts that are at the maturation peak and then try to use them for my creation. So tell us about the life of the sherry cask before it actually gets to the Lakes Distillery. Yeah, a sherry for me is, uh, I'm very, very passionate about the sherry cask. And I spend a lot of time in Spain uh, because I consider myself a student of sherry cask. And that's where I uh, focus my work on, my time on. And I do a lot of research work, more, more on the basis of flavor, character, and all the styles that sherry cask can uh, deliver to the whiskey. So for all of a cask, I am very, very heavily involved all the way from the beginning of the process, all the way from trying to select the different types of oak that I use for uh, sherry cask, whether it's American oak or Spanish oak, and then the type of seasoning uh, we use, whether it's Oloroso, PX, or Fino, or any other types of sherry. Uh, we also use, a lot of people ask us question whether do you use uh, sherry seasoned oak or is it a bodega style solera cask. We use both in our portfolio because I think uh, both casks uh, give us very distinctive character and flavor profile and when they are blended together in a right proportion they give amazingly complex but very laid back, easy drinking, elegant style of sherry whiskey. It's unusual that you use both American oak and Spanish oak for your sherry casks. What is the difference between them? 
Yeah, uh, so uh, even let's say for our Oloroso cast, we have you know Spanish oak and American oak as the predominant oaks. We I also have other species of oak from other different countries. Uh, but with American oak, uh, you get a lot of tropical fruit flavors, vanilla, and light wood spice. Well, if you look at the Spanish oak, uh, besides uh, giving a lot of color to the whiskey, they also give a lot of dry fruit character, sultanas, raisins, nutmegs. So it is intense Spanish oak and a much more elegant and lighter style is American oak. But I, as a blender and a whiskey maker, I feel the best is a blend of uh, American and Spanish. Mm, that's really fascinating. When you're using sherry, what do you look for in an American oak cask versus a Spanish oak cask? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. For me, uh, with an American oak cask, I'm looking for much more lighter flavors, more uh, vanilla uh, driven flavors, and also less tannins uh, because uh, Spanish oak gives a lot of extractives uh, and also a lot of tannins. And uh, I get a little bit of the texture, the, the mouth feel and the finish. I can use uh, French oak and Spanish oak can give me good texture there. While at the same time, the mouth feel, the aroma, uh, American oak flavor profile gives you a very, very beautiful uh, combination of vanilla and dry fruit characters. Okay, brilliant. I heard you practice élevage in your maturation. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I love uh, reading and taking cross domain concepts from different uh, areas, whether it's mathematics, music, or the way winemakers make uh, different things and applying it to making whiskey. Uh, because I think you can bring all these interesting concepts and make your whiskey even more interesting. Uh, what I do in Elevage is a concept that I borrowed from the cognac and brandy industry. So once the whiskey has uh, started its maturation in a type of cask. And let's say, for example, it started its life in a PX uh, cask. So I'm getting a lot of dry fruit characters, uh, you know, sultanas, nutmeg, raisins. But then I want to add a bit of layer of complexity and a layer of vanilla. I would move that into an American oak sherry cask or an American oak barrel. And then if I think I want to add a layer, another layer of uh, spice and cloves, uh, then I might move into a French oak cask and that will give me those characters. So what I do is uh, for some of our whiskies, I move the whiskies around from different casks that allows me to create this complex multi-layered flavor profile. So when you try or taste a Lakes Whiskey Makers Edition or Lakes Whiskey Makers Reserve, you see the complexity and the flavor profile that comes from the way it is matured and the way of uh, the way Elivage works. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.